you understand this? So uh, I think we should take questions from the audience, because I know it's not exactly the, your procedure. Your procedure is that I should talk 45 minutes, then you ask questions. But I think it's much more intelligent that you just ask questions, and I'll have to be able to talk to you about whatever's on your mind. Uh, you used to be a rabbi. Now you're a comic. Right. Are the jobs in any way similar? Well, it's very similar. It's very similar because most of the people who come to a temple or a church would rather hear jokes. <laughs> would rather hear jokes than any sermon. Most people come to a temple or a church not because they're really religious, because every study made of people practicing religion proves that only about 7% are really churchgoers of any religion. In the Catholic religion, it's a little more. Protestants, it's a little less. Jews go to, to temples very little at all, because very few people are really involved in religion. The only time they know they're religious is if they think they're going to pass away, and they turn to God. <laughs> Nobody wants to think that you die and you're dead. Man is the only kind of a thing in the world that actually believes that when you die, you'll continue living. You call it dead, but it's a lie. You're really alive in another form. What form? I don't know, but I can tell it I'm there. Where? <laughs> if they told you a cat died, but it's still living, schmuck, it's dead, that's it. <laughs> but if my sister-in-law died, she went to heaven, she went to Pittsburgh, she went to Philadelphia. She went to and that's why people go to a church once in a while on a certain big day of the year. The rest of the year, they got no time. They almost get in there. They're trying to get there. They can't get there. But if you don't get there at all, then you have no connection with the existence of God. If you get there once a year on Christmas or a Jew on Yom Kippur, and you stand there for an hour and a half falling asleep, at least you were there. <laughs> so at least God knows you showed up, and thank God... <laughs> somehow you're going to continue living after you're dead because you put in that hour and a half sleeping in some temple or church of your choice. And that's why, that's why when a rabbi talks, they, they, they're really sorry that he's so serious. They know they have to listen to him, but they were praying to God that he should tell a few jokes here. They would like to get some form of entertainment out of it because they really didn't want to be there in the first place. You see, I, I performed in a, I was a rabbi for two years. And when I originally became a rabbi, does he have to stand there like this? <laughs> You know what I find fascinating? That if a guy walks around behind you, he could be doing nothing. People forget you're there and they want to watch the guy walk. <laughs> he became more important than my whole show. <laughs> Everybody came to see me. They forgot I showed up. They're all worried. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask you a favor. If you want to take pictures, could you take pictures from someplace else? Because I know I'll, I'm going to lose the whole crowd to this man. <laughs> Probably a Nazi who found out about me. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Nobody, could you understand this? Why is it that if a guy is talking, no matter who he is, if right now Abraham Lincoln was resurrected, and he was standing here delivering a whole new speech about slavery, and the guy walked around with a camera, <laughs> this same schmuck with the camera walking around like this. They would say, Abraham Lincoln came back, but look at that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Is there, is there any subject matter you regard as so distasteful or so horrific that you cannot make any jokes about it? Well, there are, there are subject matter. It's a matter of taste. He's asking me a very good question. Did you all hear the question? Is there anything so, so disgusting or, dis or objectionable that I wouldn't make a joke about it? And I think that it's like saying, in a conversation, is there anything so disturbing or disgusting that you wouldn't say it to people in a conversation? I think normal people abridge their thoughts, consciously or not, when they talk to somebody else in accordance to who they're talking to. You won't say the same thing to a, your grandmother that you would say to your friend. <laughs> I, for instance, will never use vulgar terminology. I almost never say real filthy words. In my generation, 20 years earlier or 30 years earlier, nobody talked like that. We still don't talk that way to women, even though women talk that way to us. <laughs> I would almost never say the things to a girl that she would say to me. If, if I'm talking to a, a lady, no matter what her age, I would automatically think that if you use a full letter word that's disgusting and I wouldn't say it. I'm not even aware of the fact half of the time that the world changed, that most young ladies today use those terminologies 
as a f natural form of communication. They talk that way as much as the men do. In my time, a man talked that way, a woman never could. And in front of a woman, they never would say a dirty word. If a guy slipped out with an off-color word in front of a woman, he would apologize for now, I didn't say it, I don't know if you heard it, I didn't mean it. <laughs> he would look at the husband or the boyfriend, if it wasn't me, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> he went into a terror because he said a dirty word. Today, when you start apologizing, the girl says, F you, what are you apologizing? <laughs> this town, there's no place to go at night anyway, so I don't know if it's an honor that you came to see me, because if I wasn't here, you'd have to walk around the lobby saying, where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> we'll spend the night. Where? Wherever? I don't know. What are you? <laughs> Even in London, it's the same way. Everything is always closed or closing or about to close. <laughs> it's big business. Nobody knows who's doing it, because every time you say, hello, we're closing. We're closing. <laughs> we just closed. We never were open. We're about to close. <laughs> I notice how... Uh, just walking across the street, how people are so polite here. Even you people are students. Usually students are the most pushy, arrogant people left in the world. They usually have no respect for anybody, and that's the way they prove to themselves that they're becoming men, by letting you know you stink. I don't need you. I can live without you. Students in general, let's be honest, are obnoxious people. <laughs> Not to everybody, but at least some of the time. More often than not, <laughs> you understand? That? I'll never figure it out. But that's my opinion of what I think of you. <laughs> Hello? But over here, I notice everybody's exceptionally polite. I didn't see here one impolite word yet. I'm waiting. <laughs> in society here in general, nobody ever talks about sex. A guy could take out a girl, I don't know about how it is in college. But outside of college... <laughs> A guy could take out a girl nine times and he acts like he doesn't know that she could be a sex object. Like he makes love only to horses because you never know. <laughs> this country is full of contradictions. Why is it that in personal behavior towards each other, everybody's always apologizing? This is the most polite society, I think, in the whole English-speaking world or even any other part of any Western world. There's no place where people are as polite in the streets, in human contact, as they are in England. As soon as you say hello, they start telling you, sorry, sir, I, I didn't mean it. It's okay. <laughs> you say, what did you do? I don't remember, but I hope I don't do it again. I, I don't know how it happened. What happened? I don't know. I just did. <laughs> Please forgive me for what? For whatever I could? I don't know. <laughs> if a guy was hit by a truck, he'd apologize to the truck for an hour and a half. <laughs> he'd be laying there bleeding to death. I'm sorry I did it. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> the only place where I feel, where I see in this country, really arrogant, impolite behavior is in Parliament. Nobody would talk to each other in the street here as they talk to a prime minister in Parliament. In the United States, it's just the opposite. People are impolite very often in the streets. But in the Senate or in the House, in the congressional committees, in the congressional chambers, there's no such thing as an impolite word. They say the right honorable senator, excuse me, sir, they apologize for an hour and a half, like people do here in the streets. Here in the streets, they're very polite. But when I watched Parliament on television as an American, watching it for the first time, I really thought I was in a sanitarium. <laughs> it's, it sounds like these people are nuts. It's hard to believe that people who respect each other would ever talk that way. A guy gets up to talk, do you ever watch it on television? A guy gets up to talk, sir, I would like to say, shut up, you putt! <laughs> <laughs> They're abusing each other and calling each other names. And the prime minister is the most uh, revered person every place else in the country. As soon as he gets up with his book in his hand, schmuck, what are you hollering? <laughs> and he's looking around, how did I get this job? I don't know how to do it. 